Hey guys, welcome to CBN News' virtual Holy Land tour, where you get to see the Bible come alive from the comfort of your own home. Well, the Dead Sea is a natural wonder, a biblical landmark, and a mineral treasure. But this unique body of water is getting smaller. And as Chris Mitchell reports, some experts fear the Dead Sea could be drying up. Take a look. And what are we looking at here from this point of view? So the Sea of Galilee is down straight down here. Right in front of you, you have the mountains of Tiberias. Right after them, behind them, you have the mountains of Nazareth. And then as you go to the right, to the north, you get to the upper Galilee. And of course, this is where most of the Gospels took place, around the Sea of Galilee. Amitai Ilon owns a holiday village called Natur at the top of the Sea of Galilee on the Golan Heights. Why have you chosen to live here? If you want to live in nature, surrounded by beautiful nature and the sound of birds, you can go to the Golan, Galilee, and you can go to the Negev Desert. Now this is a farm. So it's a farm, it's a space that we use for a lot of things. We're sitting right now in a geodesic dome that is a greenhouse. Sometimes it will hold an event, a venue, or a party, or a camping of a big family. It's kind of magical. But as beautiful and peaceful as it is, the borders of Lebanon and Syria run along the Golan Heights. Iran, too, is trying to set up bases on the Syrian side nearby from which to attack Israel. How far are you from the Syrian border? Very close. There's no threat from the other side? Except for 67 war and 73 war, this place has been the safest in the country. Have you grown more apprehensive since Iran has gained a bigger foothold near the Israeli Golan? If you look at the big picture of the history of this place, thousands of years, we had extremely ups and extremely downs, but we're here. Further north, we visited security expert Kobe Marone, who was the former Israeli military commander on the Golan Heights and now lives here. With the unstable situation in Syria, with the Iranian deployment, it's critical for Israel to be here in the Golan Heights and stay here because with so many challenges, I can't think about the situation that we could be on the 67 line. Israel captured the Golan Heights in 1967 during the last two days of the Six-Day War. The Israeli-Syrian border along the Golan is about 55 miles long. Are you under a constant threat here? We feel very safe. The Israeli deterrence is very effective. The Iranian regime had a project. They plan to have here across the border 100,000 Shiites militias with the Hezbollah. They plan to have Air Force bases, Navy bases, intelligence centers. They plan to have an advanced industry to produce a precise missiles that can be a real threat for the center of Israel and the strategic spots of Israel. So that's why we saw in the last three, four years that Israel attacked this Iranian deployment and destroy and we become very successful. Some 50,000 people, more than half Jewish Israelis, live on the Golan Heights. But internationally, it's considered occupied territory. In March 2019, however, President Trump broke with tradition and recognized the strategic heights as part of Israel. Israel named a community in his honor, calling it Trump Heights. It's a dramatic statement. It's, it's unbelievable. It's so Positive. important for him. Positive, sure. A significant declaration because it came from the strongest and the most important Israeli allies, mm -hmm. United States. With the Trump recognition about the Golan Heights, there is a big challenge for the next Israeli government. I think we have to bring 100,000 Israelis to the Golan Heights in the next 10 years. I met Eliyahu Berkowitz in Katsrin, the largest city on the Golan Heights. He immigrated to Israel 28 years ago from New Jersey and moved to the Golan about seven years ago. Are you at all intimidated by the events surrounding Israel and specifically the Golan? We're always worried about Israel, but there's a lot to be optimistic about. I don't know what people think of the Golan. They built bomb shelters here when they first settled it and they've never been used. Known in the Bible as Bashan, some 635,000 tourists visited the Golan Heights last year, three quarters of them Christians, to see its stunning views, historical sites, and wineries. We've always been alone, and when I see Christians interested in Israel, that's something totally new. It gives me incredible optimism. I'm very happy about it. I think I'm helping them to be better Christians, and they're certainly helping me to be a better Jew. What way? Because I want to stay here in Israel. 
and they're helping that. And also, I'm not here just for me. I'm here for the whole world. The Torah was given at Mount Sinai, and we were supposed to be a light unto the nations. If you keep it to yourself, then, then you're breaking it. Elon, who is also a tour guide, summed up Christian commitment to Israel and the Golan Heights. If you came here between 2000 and 2005, we had kind of an intifada happening here. It was empty, except for Christians. Why do you think that is? That is the perspective, that's all. Your connection to the land, is this from the Bible, or is it from CNN, or from a narrow perspective of few years of troubles? If you're connected by narrow perspective of few years, you would say it's dangerous, it won't come. Do you believe that God is watching over Israel? Absolutely. Do you believe that? The fulfillment of the prophecy is every step you take in the country, it's hard to ignore it. Scott Ross for CBN on the Golan Heights, Israel. Thank you so much for coming along with us today. Be sure to tune in tomorrow where you'll see the innovative plan to save the Dead Sea.